Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. On today's episode, we're going to talk about why you would route your traffic through a VM and how we set that up. I do hope you enjoy this one and let's get into it. Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. On today's episode, we're talking about how you would route through VMs and why. Now, we're taking the scenario of a business like a motel or hotel. All right, so they have an internet connection coming in. In their office here, they have one router, basic firewalling on it, etc. They have a switch and some PCs for that office. And then going out, so this is like the MDF, the main distribution facility. And going out, we have two intermediate distribu distribution facilities for building one and two. And they're each separate subnets for each building. And there's two access points connecting into those switches, the access switches, for each building. Now, the thing is, they may have AP isolation turned on where at layer two, the wireless clients cannot send frames directly to each other, but that may not be enough because in this case, they may still be able to route to you, scan subnets with something like Nmap, and, you know, scan for vulnerabilities and try to exploit them. What we're trying to have here is regardless of what network we end up going to, we have the security of a firewall system in front of our computer. But... It is all contained in our computer, so that's very interesting. And how we do this is, let's say here, that Bob is scanning. He's scanning the office. He's scanning buildings to the subnet here. And the consultants that came in, they didn't implement filtering rules correctly between the subnets, or they didn't implement AP isolation. Well, he finds maybe a vulnerable um, service on your, let's say, Windows PC, etc. You're running home group and you have it set for, you know, the home profile for your network, even when you should be setting it to public. So your Windows firewall does what it's supposed to. Well, if you don't do that, they're still able to connect and exploit things and, and worm around and all that. Because you can apply this to Windows as well. And you'll see in a sec which system we're doing it on. But anyway, the idea when we're done, regardless of the physical network, the idea is if Bob from the 192.168.30.0/24 subnet sends packets to the 192.168.20.0/24 subnet in building two, he is gonna hit. He would be one scanning the firewall distributions in in the VM, and two he probably wouldn't even find an open port to begin with. All right. Now, in this case, we're using PFSense. This isn't an endorsement of PFSense whatsoever. It is just uh, what I chose to use. It's the most mainstream one I can think of. So, <clears throat> what we're doing here is PFSense is sitting between your computer in Building 2 and the real network here and it has all the stateful firewalling and everything available in pfsense so the thing is do we just bring along our our big pfsense firewall with us wherever we go and plug it in in our room well no we, we have wireless remember we're, we're not going to run a new uh utp run for the switch or anything like that but um what we will do is this so, we're on Linux in this case. This is very similar on, like, OpenBSD or FreeBSD. And on Windows, you can still do this. You, you just, the concepts I'm showing are the same in every operating system. But the implementation of how, like, the naming conventions and configurations for each one is a little bit different. But not, you know, horribly different. So here's the thing. We're using VirtualBox, first of all. You could use QEMU or, or VMware, or whatever you want. Even though VirtualBox is really a front end to that. But anyway, um, what we're doing is now, this is in 
inside of our computer. And this is all taking place inside of our network stack. So we're making the illusion to our computer that we have, not the illusion really, because we have multiple networks once we do this, but in Linux, we're making a bridge adapter, okay, called VNet0. In VNet0, we have assigned it this subnet, 192.168.240.0/24. That's going to stay behind on our quote-unquote LAN side of our VM, okay? This is our actual software. This is like where we were on Firefox, all that. But in this case, we're dot two fifty four on the VNet network. If we draw an imaginary line here, this is our LAN. And our LAN is a bridged adapter called VNet zero. Now we're gonna assign PFSense dot one on this physical this logical interface. But the interface acts as an Ethernet network. So PFSense in the software does not know any different. Okay? The only thing that really knows is our operating system. Now, when it gets, when we send packets, because we're going to use the DHCP here, when we send them, we're going to go ahead and get DHCP and get a default route. So all of our traffic we're going to send is going to go to PFSense at dot one. PFSense is going to act as any other PFSense. This is similar to if you put it in the cloud. It's kind of the same concept. It's going to NAT the traffic, let's say, because the WAN interface of PFSense is really another bridge adapter in VirtualBox. This adapter is our wireless adapter. So this is connected to the real network in the motel or hotel or the building we're in. All right, so this is one layer two network. This is another layer two network. When PFSense gets this here, it's going to NAT it. It's going to change this to be a source in this network, the real network, and then Using WLS3, it's going to send it to the real network. And then their gear will do, you know, process it normally as well. It's not affected by what we're doing at all. This is inside our computer entirely. So I hope that made sense. I tried to explain it as simply as I could. But uh, in the next part, we're just going to install PFSense um, and set this up. So uh, before we get into that, you can substitute, um, take your pick. OpenBSD, FreeBSD, uh, NetBSD, you could use just a plain chain Linux. You can use any kind of thing you want. But the advantage is you have stateful firewalling, so PFSense is going to keep track of all the states. It's going to drop everything by default, so no one's going to be able to scan you directly. And you know, you're gonna you can run Snort on here, you can run all this stuff. And wherever you go with your, that computer, it's like you well, it's not like you really do, logically anyway have a PFSense firewall protecting you, or any other distribution. But anyway, I'll see you in part two. All right, welcome back. So before we get into the PFSense part with the VM, we have to create our bridge interface. Now the first thing you want to do, and I've already done this part, install bridge-utils, okay? You need to install that to be able to use these interfaces. Now, the way, there's two ways to configure it. We can go into Etsy network interfaces, and in here we put auto vnet0, uh, I face vnet0, and um, I face vnet0 init, and to be with what we said about the diagram, to be like the diagram, we'll do 240, 254. I just want to show two effects of this. And bridge ports none. And bridge for delay one. All right. So if you do that, you see we haven't created it yet. But if you put the bridge parameters in the file, and then you install that, you install the utility and put that in Etsy network interfaces. If you do sudo if up, and then reference that interface, it will make the bridge for you automatically, not netstat. 
And if we run ifconfig again, the bridge is up and it has the IP, IP address information we put on there. Okay, and that's one. In, in other words, it's basically a switch for the most part. But it's, it's also, it's another layer 3 network as well. So, the other way to do this, and this is more just if, if you really want to understand each piece of what this is doing, if we comment the bridge part out real quick, keep the same config here for the IP addressing, and if we do, we're going to run the command first, if config vnet zero down, and then we're going to run brctl dull br del delete bridge vnet zero, and that gets rid of the bridge. What you will bump into if you just put IP address information in there and you try to do if up and reference a bridge type interface, it's going to say cannot find device. Now the reason is, is those bridge commands we put in at C network interfaces tell it, to tell the if up command to actually use brctl. Actually, um, there's a file for that in Etsy network. Um, what was it in? I think it was lib. Well, it, it is, it's called if up down dot sh, but it's for the bridge utils only. All right. That's how I tracked down that he uses this command to do this when you put those parameters in. So you don't have to do it all in one place. You don't have to do it in separate places. Regardless of any of that, we're going to run sudo brctl add br vnet zero. Now, if we do an fconfig for that interface, there we go. We have the interface. And they basically help each other because when you bring the bridge up, it sees this and puts the IP on there for you. But that's the two ways to do it. But the one you actually want to configure, you want to put these in here. If you don't, when your system boots, it's going to say that in the background that it can't find VNet0, okay? And then it's not going to be created. Now, the only other thing I will add, because we're going to use DHCP MPF sense, I'm going to delete address and netmask. And instead of static, we are going to put DH. DHCP there. So now, with the, the bridge in there, just as, as a final thing here, if we do if down now that we have that, it's able to bring that interface down. And if we look here, it's not there. But if we bring it up, it's not going to be able to discover anything. But because we have we can interrupt this because we have the parameters in the file it's going to bring it up and try to get an IP address so with that though we're going to enable the DHCP and all of that in the next part when we get PFSense going in VirtualBox so we'll see you there all right so during the break I went out to pfsense.org downloaded the newest image and Un, uh, you know, unzipped it, and then here we are. I've made a VM for it. So the type is BSD, of course. Uh, it's FreeBSD 64-bit. Now, for the system, in my case, I put 512 megabytes of RAM. This is the minimum for, for this. But for now, you know, I'm a little bit limited on one laptop. But honestly, if you weren't recording and doing all of that, you can give it a lot more. So anyway... Under storage, we have 4 gigs. I'm not planning on running services on this or installing packages other than the stable firewalling. Now, the important part is under networking. Now, instead of NAT, we want to use bridged adapter, okay? And under the name, we want to select VNet0. And under advanced here, we want to tell it the last part of this interface's MAC address is 01. 
That's just my preference because it makes it easier to spot in if config output and things like that. Now, you won't get that luxury on real hardware all the time, but in this case, we can do it, so why not? Under adapter 2, because remember, adapter 1, VNet 0, this is our LAN, all right? Now, we're going to enable a second one. This adapter is the real network from the diagram, the WLS3, or, you know, our Ethernet. You can do either. But what we want to do, as you may have guessed already, is put this to 02. 02 there. So we can identify it easier. So to summarize, there is our settings for type inversion. That's the amount of RAM in this case. And our first network card is WLS, our second one, which is our WAN, is a bridge adapter on WLS3. And then this is our LAN, and it's a bridge adapter to our bridge interface we created before. Now, one more thing. If you want to do run multiple VMs for some reason for this or anything else, if you go under System Processor, at least in VirtualBox, you can set the number of processes, process cores, processor cores, or physical CPUs that it can use, and the execution cap of how much the process for this VM can actually utilize on the CPU. And if you are CPU limited, that will help you run more, but not have a slowed down experience on your host which nowadays with most computers, that's not really going to happen, have that big of an effect. I mean, this right here is a 10-year-old computer I'm doing this on right now. Like 2008, 11. <laughs> so anyway, we have all that. We talked about the storage and the network. The next part, we're going to get PFSense installed, and then I will pick up uh, from there and show you what to set up where. So I'll see you there in one second. All right, so before we get into the PFSense, um, for people wondering if you can script this or not, or an easier way to make this, um, the thing is, if we look at that file real quick, and uh, the interfaces, I have a static config, but you have to have VNet0 created before you can use it in PFSense in the VM. But you can't get DHCP from it until PFSense is listening on that interface. So it's a chicken and egg problem. So you can either do what I did, where you can uncomment all this and have static information, and then you can use if up vnet0, like we did before, but that will set the static. But if you put DHCP in the interfaces file and put if up vnet0, you'll try to get the IP over DHCP, and you'll have the chicken and egg problem. So what I'm getting at here is right now, vnet0 doesn't exist. We're going to go ahead and use brctl and add br and then add it, and that creates it. So at a bare minimum, if you don't use static, you can't use DHCP before creating the interface. All right? You have to create it first before you can start the VM. All right, so with that, we'll go ahead. And uh, don't get me wrong, though, you can go in here. Just to be clear, you can uncomment these as we did before. And I'll go ahead and bring the bridge down. And then we'll just go ahead and delete it. All right, the bridge is in here now. And without DHCP, I can use that command. All right. So just a little gotcha there that I wanted you to be aware of. You have to create VNet0 before you start the VM that's going to use that interface as a bridged interface. So, okay, now for real, I will see you in PFSense. Okay, this is a freshly installed PFSense. And we're going to go ahead and hit option 8 here because i got to verify the MAC addresses, how we configured them differently. All right, EM0 is the LAN and EM1 is the WAN. So we're going to go ahead... And EM1 is the WAN. So we got to actually reassign those. We're going to hit 1. 
and we don't need VLANs at the moment. And we're going to say EM1 is our WAN, EM0 is our LAN, and say yes. And I may have to pause this, but the, the speed is, is not because of PFSense. It's because I'm virtualizing this and don't have enough resources. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and pause this for one second. All right, we're back. And we're going to go ahead. Now that we've assigned the interfaces, we want to change the IPs. And we want to change it on the LAN interface. And if you remember back from the diagram, it was 240.1 is what we wanted with a 24 mask. Just hit enter and hit enter. And in this case, we'll, we'll enable it on there, but we won't use the range we used on the VNet zero interface for the static address. So we'll just use uh, 240, 100 through 240, 200. And no, you don't have to use DHCP in this case. And we don't want to have HTTP for that web configurator. And let it reload for us. And we should be able at that point to navigate to 192.168.240.1 just on our normal computer, and it will actually be routed in the VNet0 interface. Right? Even though it's in our computer, it's another separate network. So we're going to go ahead and verify that coming up right next. And we'll just let this get... Yeah, we'll go ahead and verify that right next. So I'll be back in one second. Okay, welcome back. So before we get into the web interface, let's go ahead and drive the point home here that the... Bridge interface is not made yet. We're going to go ahead and use brctl, add br, and make the bridge. So once we do that, it doesn't have an address yet, but we need to have that before we start the VM. That's still our normal, you know, table. We don't have that interface in yet. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and start the VM and then go on to the web interface. We'll actually start the VM and then get the address over DHCP. You'll see in a second. All right, as you can see, PFSense is booted. And um, like I said, we don't have the address yet, but now that it is, we can do vhnet0 with the dh client command. And from PFSense's DHCP server, we got an IP address. So at this point, we can go ahead and uh, ping that address. All right. Now, we do need to get into the web interface, though, before we can get to the uh, internet. So I'll see you in a second. All right. Now we're in the web interface. We're going to go ahead and log in with the default credentials. And go ahead and go through the initial wizard real quick. And pretty much, I'm just going to accept the defaults here. We're, we're not focusing too much on this for right now. And default time zone and everything. And if you do mess up and uh, change the um, IP addressing, it won't break the connection. But if, if you change it at this point, you know, you're obviously going to have to get the address again and all that. Okay, we'll change the admin password. And remember, this is happening in my computer. This PFSense is not external. It is right in my own computer. And I'm accessing it over the bridge interface. All right, we'll go ahead and finish. And after this, we'll just uh, enable uh, SSH and do the rest of it from the shell. And this isn't because of PFSense why it's slow. It's just because I virtualized it. All right, let's go right to System Advanced. And go ahead and enable it. And self-explanatory. Hit save. All right, now see it a second after we SSH in. Okay. 
So now that I'm in there, I'm going to run a netstat on my local computer here. And this is the routing table of my local computer. All we have right now is a connected route for VNet0. We don't have a default gateway. What well, we do, but we don't have the right one. Now, what we're going to do uh, first is I'm going to go ahead and let's do option 9. And let's filter by port, port 25. Okay, and if I do a trace route right now to Google, I'm going through 192.168.0.2, my real network. And those packets are going out WLS3 directly. All right? So if I do a telnet right now to make some port 25, some SMTP traffic, you see nothing up there in PF top is uh, showing. Now, the reason that happens is because we're going through the real network. The routing table is using my physical interface, not the bridge. So to use the bridge, we're just going to delete the default gateway for the real network, okay? And because I already got a lease over DHCP, oh, actually we don't have it. It's okay. We'll go ahead and just... Uh, Add it in, but if you use DHCP with this, it will just give you the route as well. So we'll just go ahead and add that. Just to try to show the difference. Whoops. Don't forget the add part. Okay. Now if we examine the routing table again, it says 240.1 and the default is VNet0. We're going to do the same two things. Now, if we trace route, our first stop is actually 192.168.240.1, okay? So, that is our first hop through the VM that's PFSense. And now, if we go back up to the Telnet command and click Enter, see that? That's because it's going through VNet0 for all the traffic. So, it's being forced to go through the bridge interface. That's the land side of our PFSense VM. When PFSense gets it, it goes ahead and just routes the packet like normal, does NAT and everything, and then sends it out to the rest of the real network. Okay, so uh, again, the, the rest of the real network being like so. All right. Okay, so I figure that someone's thinking right now, what happens if you send a packet or get sent a packet directly to the IP on the real interface. All right, wouldn't that bypass the PFSense on WLS3? Well, I'm gonna try to explain why that is not the case with this. So let's go over to PFSense and under firewall rules, I'm gonna create a new rule under the LAN tab for the LAN interface. This rule is actually going to be a pass rule. Now, by default, it does uh, give you the logging information for the default deny, but it doesn't give you uh, other log information. So, we're going to make a new one in this case for echo requests. And we want to make sure these packets, uh, we want them to be coming from the The VNet0 interface, if you remember, we want to log them and just say something like pass ICMP and make sure it is pass up here. Okay, once we apply these, okay, all we really have to do at this point to show is we'll just go into look at the log interface and I'm going to do two things 
use npng and send some ICMP traffic, the echo type, with a source of, well, actually I didn't show you, with a source of my land interface, okay? So this is my LAN interface itself. And this is bypassing, would be bypassing PFSense. Okay, would just send directly. We're going to ping to Google, and I want you to really watch this output. You see just the echo requests in that output? Google's not replying, even though it would reply if the packets were getting there. But this is, it logs the default deny as well. If we just clean up this output real quick, so it's not uh, confusing. I'll run that again. So remember, that was just echo requests. But if I change the packet I'm making with Nmap to be 24100, which 24100 is my address I got on the VNet Zero interface with the HTTP. Okay, if I change it to that, now we're getting replies and the first packet's being logged because of the rule we put in there. So that's what I'm trying to explain. Um, with a policy that drops packets by default and the anti-spoofing on the LAN interface specifically, at least with PFSense, um, that's going to stop your computer from using its real source address and it has to use the source address from VNet Zero. Okay, so it's a way that it will not be able to bypass that. And if you use something like OpenBSD, you would just do block drop all and then do pass rules for the specific address, not the real address. But anyway, though, that's how this works, and it definitely stops all traffic that is not funneled through the VM. So with all that, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, I'm Tyler with T-Tech. Oh, and have a very nice day.